you know I'm very passionate about arcade controllers and fight sticks. And a big reason why I'm so heavily involved in these communities is because of products like this. But what even is this? Hey guys, this is Damog, and I hope you're doing well, because today I want to talk about some really cool products by Oat42. Oat42, or Cosmox, is a Chinese company that produces leverless and keyboard-style gaming controllers. Their Oatpad line has gained popularity in the arcade controller space because of their customization potential, their usage of the GP2040CE open-source firmware, and their ridiculously affordable price point. If this is the first you're hearing about these products or this company, welcome to YouTube. These products have been very popular among enthusiasts of both fighting games and gaming controllers. Today I'll be talking about the Oatpad line of products, specifically the S16, the T16, and the M16. To start, all the controllers I will discuss today have some features in common. They all run off the GP2040CE firmware with a Raspberry Pi Pico chip. They use USB-C ports for console connectivity and USB extension ports for pass-through authentication on the consoles that require it. They all have customizable RGB LEDs in the attack and movement buttons. They each have a black and white display that shows your button inputs. Finally, they all use Kale Chalk V2 keyboard switches with hot swap sockets, and by default you get red switches. Now let's dive into what sets them apart from each other. Let's start with the S16. Look at how small and cute it is. Look at that little guy. The S16 has a small footprint at just under 8 inches long by 5 inches wide. It has an acrylic sandwich style design with beveled edges on the top panel. It uses two USB-C ports for connecting to a console instead of one, though I don't think you should use both at the same time. Because of its size, this may be more comfortable to play on a desk. Next up is the T16. This is similar to the S16 in that it uses an acrylic sandwich style design, but with a larger footprint at around 12 inches long by 8 inches wide. Also like the S16, it has a beveled edge on the top panel. The keycaps are all sized with the same larger keycap that's used for the bottom up key in the S16. This spaces the keys farther apart from each other. The larger footprint allows for ample wrist space and more allowance for more comfortable play on your lap. Finally, let's look at the M16. To break away from the acrylic build, this controller uses an all-aluminum body. It feels so solid in the hands with its heavier weight. It also uses the all-large button layout of the T16. The bottom edge of the top panel has a large chamfer for extra comfort on the wrists. This has a footprint in between the previous two controllers at about 9.5 inches long by 6.5 inches wide. I think this controller feels great whether you play it on a desk or on your lap, and personally it is my favorite of the Oatpad line. Now that we got all the bullet points out of the way, let's talk about what I like and dislike about all of these controllers. So with the S16, I really like the, the portability of it, the size, uh, the layout is great. I think the layout as far as like the button cap sizes go, it's perfect. I don't think I would change anything about it. I also like the two USB-C ports, one on the top side and one on the left edge. And I think that's good for people that don't really want to plug their controller in at the top. They want to plug it in on the side. For the T16, I like the size of it. I like how much wrist room you get from it. Because of that size, it's not going to slip off my lap that much. It's going to really stay on there and I keep my legs at a pretty reasonable distance apart. As for the M16, I really like the premium feel of it. The materials, the aluminum. I like the weight to it because of the aluminum. Ultimately, it is the controller I would pick out of this lineup because of how it feels. That feel is so important to me. I love the feel of playing on an aluminum panel. It just, it, for me, it's just perfect. Now for all of the controllers, I like that they use the GP2040CE firmware. If you enjoy tinkering, this firmware, it's gonna be perfect for you. And honestly, in my opinion, this is 
the best open source firmware you can use to wire up a controller and play a game with. I also like the potential for customization, especially with the S16 and the T16 because they have acrylic top panels. You could slide in some artwork underneath and really make it pop and make it your own. Oh, and let's not forget either, these are extremely affordable. And to me, that is the biggest appeal with the O42 line. The S16, for example, retails around $60 if you go off of Amazon. If you get the T16, it's around $80. And if you get the M16, it's about $110. And they're even less expensive if you go off of the AliExpress store. So, in my opinion, you can't beat this type of quality for these prices. Okay, I'm not gonna say these are perfect controllers because I don't think they're perfect. I do have a few issues with them. For example, like with the S16, uh, the size is a little small. Um, it's not the best for playing on your lap. The T16 kind of solves those problems because it's a, it's a significantly larger controller. But one thing I don't like about it is the fact that all the buttons are like 30 millimeter equivalent. They're more like 25 millimeters in diameter, these button caps, but that bigger button cap pushes the keys farther apart. I'm not totally comfortable with the layout. Now, if it had the S16 layout, that would be perfect and it would solve all my problems with the T16. And the M16, my issues with that are similar to my issues with the T16. That button layout is a little uncomfortable for me because my hands are not very big. On top of that, you don't have a ton of options with customization. As far as putting on artwork, like there's no plexi to really slide it under. You would have to make like some kind of vinyl wrap. In that case, you're kind of limited to how you customize the M16. Honestly, those complaints are pretty minor considering the type of product we just looked at. In my opinion, these are perfect controllers if you want to start with like a leverless controller or if you're just getting into the fight stick hobby for the first time. It's a perfect budget point for controllers like this that are compatible with PS5 fighters also. So thanks for watching guys. I'm really glad I got to talk about these controllers. Thank you to O42 slash Cosmox for sending me the S16 and T16 for review purposes. I greatly appreciate it. And I will keep my eyes peeled for their upcoming products. They have other products I didn't talk about. So check them out on their AliExpress store. I'll link that below. And as always, thank you for watching once again. If you liked this kind of content please leave a thumbs up and if you want to support my channel you could hit the subscribe button and you know just show your love through the comments i hope you guys have a good day and i will see you soon